So depreciation of the non-current asset, chapter number four. Now from here, um, obviously we're going to learn how to depreciate, how to depreciate the asset, what type of asset, non-current asset. And uh, uh, we will see how many types or how many uh, methods, how many methods we have to depreciate the asset. Now, before you start, let's talk about a little bit about these two words. The first word we have, that is a depreciation. And the next word we have, non-current asset. So we have a depreciation and we have non-current asset. So we have two things. We'll discuss a little bit about these two. What is depreciation and what is the non-current asset? Depreciation is the reduction of the value of the non-current asset. Reduction of the value of the non-current asset. For example, let's say I have a pen and this pen, for example, is a non-current asset. Or let's say you have a computer and this computer is a non-current asset. The asset we're going to use it more than one year and uh, maybe um, uh, we'll depreciate it over the useful life. Now the question is, now the question is, uh, uh, how are we going to basically depreciate the asset? Uh, the first thing here we need to understand the depreciation, why we need depreciation. The reason we need the depreciation, we cannot, we cannot actually use the use forever. We cannot use the asset forever. For example, if I buy a computer today, I'm gonna use it maybe for five years, maybe for 10 years. And if the company is very rich, if the company is really good, they will even use it less than five years or two years or three years. And after that, they're gonna re replace this computer. So they will say in every two, three years, the new computer will be in the market. So you're gonna buy the new one. So we're not gonna use it for 15 or 20 years. It depends on maybe one company can use it more 20 years. But when company decide, I have an asset and I'm going to use it five years. So that means within five years, the value will be zero. Let's say, for example, I buy a computer for hundred pound. And I have decided, I have decided to use it for five years. And this one is called useful life. Useful life. So the number of years, the number of years I'm going to use this asset that is called useful life. Now let's say my plan, I'm going to use this asset for five years. So my, my cost for this piece is 100 and I'm going to use it for five years. Now, how much will be the depreciation per year? So that's very simple. Every year, I'm going to reduce the value based on the number of year or number of useful life. So I would say, okay, so 100 is my cost and five years I'm going to use it. So every year I'm going to reduce the value 20 pound. So every year 20 pound will be reduced. And after five years, the value of the computer will be zero. Because every year, if I keep minusing 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, and after five years, the value of this computer will be zero. So this 20, we calculated, this is called depreciation. So this is basically the reduction of the value of non current asset. Now, this point number one. The next point is, if I minus the depreciation after one year, the balancing amount is called carrying value. For example, the cost was 100 pound. Let's say the cost is 100 pound. And the first year depreciation, first year depreciation that we have calculated 20 pound. So if we minus the 20, after one year, after the end of the year, the value remaining for this asset will be 80 pound carrying value. This is called carrying value. The value 
right now carrying by the asset. This is called carrying value. So from the cost, from the cost, if we minus, if we take away the depreciation, this is called carrying value. Step number two. Now, the next step, we'll see how many types of depreciation we have. We have a two types of depreciation. The first one is straight line. Straight line is fixed. That means every year, the amount of depreciation will be same. Every year, the amount of depreciation will be same under the straight line method. Let's say if I say the straight line method, straight line method is 20%. So I said 20%, 20%. So straight line method is 20%. That means on cost 100 pound, I'll multiply by 20%. And every year, my depreciation will be fixed. So that is 20 pound. And the next method we have that is called reducing balance, or sometimes it's called diminishing method. So diminishing balance method. So you can say reduce balance or diminishing method. Diminishing value. So when I say the reducing balance, or uh, diminishing value method. This method basically reduces the value every year and the new depreciation is calculated on the closing balance. So for example, let's say, let's say for example, um, we are in a straight line method. Let's say the cost, the cost is 100 pound and we are calculating the depreciation under the straight line and diminishing value. So let's start with the first one. This is state line is 20% and the diminishing value also 20%. Both are different to method, remember that. Both are different to method. This is not a link to each other. So both will be follow the cost that is 100 pound. So let's have a look, the first one. Under the straight line method, let's say the depreciation for the first year, let's say my cost is 100 pound and depreciation for the first year, 20 pound, 20% 20 of the cost. So my carrying value, the carrying value, the leftover value after one year, that is 80 pound. So the next one, on the second year, I'll do again the same depreciation, 20% on 100. That is 20 again. And if I minus that, the difference we have 60, this is carrying value. So what I try to explain here, the depreciation is same. The depreciation is same under the straight line method. So if we follow the straight line method, the depreciation for year one, year two, year three, year four, year five, it will be same. But on the other hand, if I follow the reducing balance or diminishing method, what will happen here? So on the diminishing value, let's say the cost is 100 again. And the first year depreciation, 20%, that will be same like 20 and the carrying value will be 80. But year number two, on the second year, on the second year, the depreciation will be on 80. So 20% will be on 80, not on the 100. So this one on the straight line method, the depreciation is fixed on the cost. So 20% fixed, doesn't matter how many years. So every year, the depreciation is fixed under the straight line method. But when you follow the diminishing method or the reducing balance method, so we calculate the depreciation on the carrying value. So you can see here, the first year, it was uh, 20, so it's same exactly like the reducing, uh, straight line method. But the next year, we're calculating on 80. So 20% on 80, let's say 16. 
So depreciation is coming down. The next year it will be whatever is the balance on there. So depreciation will go reducing. So depreciation figure will go down. So that's how we can calculate the straight line and the diminishing. I'm just explaining the basic thing. Uh, it's, it's not something we are doing any question. So basically try to make you understand how is it work. All right, so this is the two depreciation method we're going to see uh, from this uh, depreciation chapter on the non kind asset. And the next point uh, we have to remember, uh, that is our uh, one formula that is very important to remember, that is called uh, cost less residual value minus number of useful life. So when, when the quotient uh, will not give you any type of percentage, for example, if the quotient didn't give us any type of percentage, so obviously that time we have to calculate the depreciation based on this formula. Normally this formula under the straight line, so you need to see how much is the cost. Let's say the cost is 100 pound. Let's say cost is 120 pound. And the residual value, we have to minus the residual value. Let's say it is 20. And the useful life, it is five years. So the depreciation will be 120 minus 20 divide five, that is 20 per year. Now, what is the residual value? The residual value is the value that we expect after the useful life end. For example, let's say I have a computer and I'm expecting I'm gonna use this computer for five years. Now, after five years, after using the computer five years, if I can sell this computer for 10 pound or 50 pound, this is called residual value. Sometimes you call it a scrap value. When you're going to scrap our car, so they give us some money and this is called a scrap value. So residual value and the scrap value is the same concept. So after we use completely the useful life of the asset, and if we can sell it for any money, it could be five pounds. So this will call uh, residual value or scrap value. All right, so this is the uh, basic thing about the depreciation. So two methods, um, straight line and diminishing uh, uh, value. And uh, we have the formulas and uh, the depreciation. The next point I'd like to discuss about accumulated depreciation, ACC depreciation, it's called accumulated depreciation. Accumulated depreciation is the total depreciation up to date, total depreciation up to date. For example, let's say, let's say I have a depreciation on year one. So year one, I have a depreciation 20, Year two, I have a depreciation 20. Year three, I have a depreciation 20. So every year the depreciation is 20, 20, 20. But if I said, how much is the accumulated depreciation? So that will be total 60. So accumulated depreciation means the total depreciation till now. Accumulated depreciation means the total depreciation to date or till now. So we have learned a few things so far. Obviously, uh, obviously, like uh, it's not even we went to the chapter yet. It's the basic thing we discuss. Hopefully, like when you go inside, will be more clear after. Okay, let's have a look. Um, I have a question from Sabira. What is the depreciation? The depreciation is a reduction uh, of the value of the non-current asset. So if we have an asset, if we reduce the value slowly, slowly every year, and the value we reduce, this is called depreciation. And uh, um, straight line, if straight line is a very straightforward, basically um, if, um, if the depreciation is same every year, we call it a straight line method. So we don't change it every year. So amount of the depreciation is fixed. All right, so let's move on. Let's have a look what you have in the chapter. So the first thing we have here, uh, the counting, accounting records for the depreciation. The depreciation is charged to SPL, so profit and loss account. So if I have a depreciation for this year, 
uh, I'm going to charge you to the profit and loss account. Remember that uh, depreciation is a non-cash item. Depreciation is a non-cash item. Non-cash item means uh, because of the depreciation, there is no actual movement of the money from my business. For example, if I buy a computer, I paid actually 100 pound from, from the company. But when we actually use this computer and every year we reduce the value 20, 20 on the paper on the accounts, but actually no money is going from me. It's just on the paper. So that's why we called it non-cash item. So if something just on the paper, but there is no actual movement of the money, we called it uh, non-cash item. So depreciation is one of the example of the non-cash item. And this is the concept of accrual. So we follow the, uh, we prepare the accounts and depreciation is one of the entry that based on accrual concept. So if we have a depreciation that belongs to profit and loss account, depreciation is expense that will, re that will reduce your profit and you'll pay less tax because of the depreciation. Then the next point we have Accumulated depreciation. This item belongs to a balance sheet or a statement of financial position. So this one will be reduced the value of the non kind asset. So in the statement of financial position, we minus it from the cost. So that, for example, the asset have a cost 100 pound, we reduce the depreciation 20. So 80 will be remaining as a carrying value. So depreciation goes to profit and loss account. Accumulated depreciation goes to balance sheet. Depreciation method. So we have a straight line method. We have a diminishing balance and we have the unit of product. This one is very, very rare. It will never come like unit production. This one, anyone knows like how to do it. So cost divide number of unit. This is not even the proper depreciation method. Only the manufacturer industry who make something, maybe they can use this method. Otherwise everyone use either a straight line or either the diminishing balance or the reducing balance method. Let's have a look what we have on the straight line. We already, we already, um, we already discussed that before. Depreciation charge is the same each year. So obviously we, we know this formula, cost residual value over useful life. Now the cost uh, means the how much you paid for the non kind asset. Residual value is scrap value, how much you can get after the useful life end of this asset. And use, uh, obviously the useful life, how many years I am planning to use it. Diminishing value, it will be reduced, the carrying value every year, and that will give us the new depreciation. So for example, let's say we have year one, let's say the cost is 100, and year number one, the depreciation is 20%, for example, so 20 is the depreciation. After year one, the carrying value will be 80. So then the second year depreciation will be calculated on 80. So 20% on that. So let's say 16 and whatever it is. So it will come here and the third year depreciation will come here. So it will keep reducing. So, so the depreciation on the first year will be 20, second year 16, then it will be maybe 12, then eight, then six. So it will be keep reducing the amount of depreciation. Um, what does depreciation charge means? Depreciation charge means how much, how much depreciation, how much depreciation are you going to include on your accounts, on your profit and loss account? So the reason is, the reason is um, um, after the useful life end, the asset will be no more with you. Now, slowly, slowly, you have to claim this one as expense. So as long as you uh, have the right amount of depreciation charge, let's say you can decide. So you said like, I want to keep uh, depreciation 20%. I want to do it 15%. I want to do it 50% is all up to you. There is a no hard and soul rules. Like HMS will never tell you the depreciation rate need to be 10%, 20%, no. It's the company who can decide how much will be the depreciation charge. And based on that, you will keep claiming the expense and the day, you're claiming all the expense and the asset will be moved automatically from the financial statement because the accumulated depreciation will be keep minusing from the asset. We'll see the example. And after that, hopefully it will be more clear. All right, so let's move on. Let's do some, 
Uh, depreciation is an expense. We cannot say it is wastage. So the wastage is something uh, that uh, we throw it, isn't it? But the depreciation is the systematic way you reduce the value of the asset. The reason is we replace the asset always. For example, if we have a car, if we have a computer, if we have a printer, we don't use it for 1000 years. So after five, 10 years, we have to change it. We have to replace it. And that's why we already make a plan. I'm going to use it for next five years. The useful life is five years or so 10 years. So we keep uh, reducing the value. So after five years, we can replace the new one. So we cannot say it is wasted. All right. So let's have a look. One of the example. Let's try this one, activity one. So straight line depreciation. The first one we're doing a straight line machine. As you already know, a straight line give us the same depreciation every year. And uh, we'll see how we have to calculate that. Let's read this question. Said a business, a business buy a machine for 2,500. So the cost is 2,500. So we have the cost, cost is 2,500. It is expected to have a useful life of three years. So you already have the useful life. Useful life is three years. After which time it will have a scrap value 252. So we have a scrap value 250. So this is like kind of uh, the residual value. Remember that scrap value and the residual value is the same thing. Scrap value and the residual value is the same thing. So let's do the formula. If you remember our formula, cost minus residual value over the useful life. So he said, okay, that's not gonna be difficult for us. So cost is 2,500 and the residual value is a 250 and the useful life is three years. So you can see it's not very difficult because they even didn't give us the percentage, but we can still calculate that. So it's not something uh, very difficult for us. So how much will be the depreciation charge? So depreciation charge will be uh, the amount that we're going to charge on the profit and loss account every year. So that is 750, very well done. Very well done everyone, 750, yes, it's 750. So 750 is the depreciation per year. Remember that per year. And I already told you, so there is a difference between the depreciation and the accumulated depreciation. Accumulated depreciation means the depreciation till now. So every year the depreciation will be added. So the total depreciation, we called it accumulated depreciation. So 750 is the depreciation per year. So number one is done. Let's talk about number B. As I calculate the cost, accumulated depreciation and carrying amount for each year of the asset life. So every year they're asking to do it. So let's do it. So first year we have 2,500. So that's the cost. 2,500 and accumulated depreciation was 750. And the carrying value is the difference. Remember that carrying value is the difference, cost minus depreciation. Cost minus depreciation, the difference is called carrying value. So 2,500 was the cost and the depreciation for the first year, year number one, that was 750. So the difference is called carrying value. So how much is the carrying value we have? So you have 17, 50. That's our carrying value. Now the next year, it is a straight line method. Remember, it is a straight line. So that's why you're going to follow the same cost. If it is a uh, diminishing value, then we take this one here, we do that, but we'll see it later on. So you're going to take the same thing again, the cost, 2,500. Now the depreciation again, 750 year number two, isn't it? But this time accumulated depreciation will be how much? We already have 750 from the last year and year number two have a 750. So how much will be the total? Very, very careful. So we already have 750 from the last year. And this year, the depreciation will be again 750. So 750 for year one and 750 for year two. So in year number two, my total depreciation will be 1500. And how much will be the carrying value? 2500 minus 15, and that will give me the carrying value 1000. And finally, year number three, I have the same cost 2500 and the depreciation, how much will be the accumulated depreciation on year number three? So 
up to year three, the total depreciation, how much it will be. So 750, 750, and 750. So if I added three years 750 depreciation, that will be the total depreciation till now. So I'll say the total depreciation, how much? Two, two, five, zero. And how much will be the carrying value? So the carrying value will be 250. Now this is the exactly 250 we can see, we'll sell it as a scrap. This is the exactly 250 we're going to sell as a scrap. So now we understand after two years, the asset will be gone, will be vanished from the system. Only 250 I can sell a scrap value to someone and this is called residual value. So what we understand from here, we can see on year number one, my cost was 2,500 and my depreciation was 750. And after year one, the value of the asset will be 1750, isn't it? Now, after one year, uh, the value remaining on the asset will be 1750. Now, if I can sell the asset more than 1750, I'll make a profit. If I cannot sell it, I'll make a loss. So for example, if I try to sell the asset after one year uh, for 2000 pound, so I know the value remaining is 1750 and I sold it for 2000. So the difference is profit for me. And if I sell it for 1500, that means I sold it less than the carrying value. That means I'm making a loss. So carrying value is the value right now carrying by the asset. After two years, the value will remaining 1000 and the total depreciation is gone, 1500. So 750 plus 750. Now, if I sell it for 1200, for example, I'll make a profit of 200. If I sell it 900, I make a loss 100. Same like year three, the total depreciation two to five zero and the value is zero now. Now, if I sell it more than 250, I'll make a profit, but I'm selling as a scrap. So I'm thinking I'm not gonna sell it. This does a scrap. So this is a straight line is a very simple just to calculate and find the difference. All you have to remember depreciation charge is the depreciation for one year. So this is the reduction value for on, only for the particular year, only for the one year. But on the other hand, the accumulated depreciation is the depreciation to date. So up to now, how much was the depreciation? Total depreciation is called accumulated depreciation. For example, if I said, you you save you save every month five pound so let's say for the month of january you save five pound for the month of february you save five pound now for the month of january is five for the month of february is five but up to now you save 10 pound so if i try to connect this one i said this one is a depreciation this one is a depreciation and the 10 is the accumulated depreciation because till now i save 10 pound all right, so let's move on to the next one. Any question from here? All right, very good. So let's move on to the next one, activity two. On activity two, we have a straight line. This time we have another example maybe building. So let's have a look how it work. So activity two, straight line depreciation building. A business has the following balances relating to non-current assets. So we have a 30 June 2005 and 30 June 2006. So year ending is June, that's fine. Building at cost. So the cost is 100,000 for the year ending five and 600,000. The depreciation, accumulated depreciation on 2005 is 12,000. And 2006, they said, we need to be calculated. So they ask us to calculate it. Now remember, if we calculate the depreciation for 2006, this one will need to be included inside because it's the accumulated depreciation. Accumulated depreciation means all the previous depreciation will be added together. So let's have a look. Depreciation is a provided two person on the straight line. So two person is straight away, nothing else, two person on the cost. All right. The first requirement we have, calculate the depreciation charge for the year ended 30 June 2006. So for this year, how much will be the depreciation for the year 2006? How much will be the depreciation? So we have 100,000, isn't it? And it's a two person, straightforward. There is no residual value, nothing is here, so it's very simple. 
So two percent that is two thousand. So two thousand will be the depreciation. That's only for one year. And how much will be the accumulated depreciation? So you already have twelve thousand from two thousand five, isn't it? So from two thousand five we have twelve, and this year we have another two. So that's not going to be difficult. So it's going to be fourteen thousand, isn't it? So fourteen thousand will be the total accumulated depreciation. Very well done. Any question from here? Question uh, activity two. Very good, Umaima. Very good, Esther. Very good, Sudarshan. Yes, all you have the right answer. Very good, Graham. So let's move to the next question then. Now we move to the diminishing balance method. This is quite interesting method. Uh, uh, if you understand it, it's not going to be difficult, but you need to know how it work. So let's have a look at activity three. So in activity three, they said diminishing balance depreciation. As I said, the value of the uh, asset will go down and we calculate the depreciation on the carrying value. A business buys a machine costing 6,000. So 6,000 is the cost. 6,000 is the cost, all right. The depreciation rate is 40% on diminishing balance basis. So no problem, let's start with that. So activity three. So we have the first one, we need to see how much is the cost. Carrying value opening. Balance BD means the balance both for the opening balance, so 6,000. 6,000 is the opening balance we have. Now the depreciation rate, the quotient said 40%, so it's at 40%. And how much will be the depreciation? 6,000 times 40%. So that will give me the depreciation for year one. So 2,400, very well done. And accumulated depreciation. We don't have any previous depreciation. That's the first year, isn't it? So it will be same. Because we don't have any previous depreciation, this is the year number one, so it is still same. And how much will be the carrying value? This is the cost minus the accumulated depreciation, isn't it? So cost minus the depreciation, that will give us, uh, you can minus with this too, cost minus depreciation, that will give us the carrying value. So 3,600, very well done. Now this is just like a straight line. Now when you move to the next year, this is the trick. Very, very careful. This is the trick. When you move to year number two, we're not gonna take 6,000 anymore as a cost because our remaining value is 3,600. Now this 36,000, what was the balance CD will be the balance BD for year two. So the balance CD for year one will be the balance BD for year two. So whatever is the closing for this year will be opening for the next year. So I'm gonna follow this one, not 6,000 anymore. I'm gonna say 3,600 here. This is the difference between the straight line and the dimension. So you find the difference. So we said, okay, I'm gonna follow the carrying value. That's the value right now I have with the asset. So I said 3,600 30, and the depreciation rate is same 40%. How much will be the depreciation here? 3,600 times 40%. So 1440, very well done, Moima. So 1440. Very good job. So yes, we have like uh, now, how much will be the accumulated depreciation? Now I'm going to add the previous one as well, isn't it? Because we already have some depreciation from the last year and that will give me the new depreciation. So I said, okay. So the total depreciation will be 3840. Very well done, 3840. And the carrying value is the depreciation minus cost minus depreciation charge. So carrying value minus the depreciation charge. So that is how much? 2160, very well done. 2160, very good, Joe. Very good, Sabira, very good, PMI. So all have the right answer. So move to the next one. So you're gonna follow this one again. 2160, 40% again. How much will be the depreciation for that? Year number three. So 2160 times 40%. So that is 864, very well done, Esther. So 864. And the accumulated depreciation added this one, 864 plus 3840. The depreciation will be increased. The accumulated depreciation will be 4704. Very well done, 4704. 
and how much will be the carrying value. So this minus this, it will give you the carrying value, 1296. Very well done. So this is basically the diminishing value. So here we don't follow the same cost, whatever is the closing balance, balance CD, we take this one as opening balance and calculate the depreciation on that. All right, any question from here? Anyone have any question from this, go from activity free? Very well done, very, very good. Let's move to the next one then. So let's still move to activity four, let's try that one. Slowly, slowly we're going a little bit tricky. So we're not gonna do the question like kind of suddenly a hard question. So we go slowly, slowly. Activity four is a diminishing balance depreciation vehicle. Business has the following balance relating to a non-kind asset. Balance, so the same thing, we have done this question, but this time it is a diminishing value. So 31st of January 2008, 31st of Jan 2009. Cost 50, 50, that's fine. Accumulated depreciation, the depreciation you already have. They asked to calculate this one for the January 2009. So depreciation rate is 30%, diminishing method. We done same example for the straight line, but this time we'll need to do under the diminishing balance. So they're asking, calculate the depreciation charge for the year 31st January 2009. Okay, that's very good. No problem for that. And we have the accumulated depreciation for 2009. So we'll calculate the depreciation for one year and the total depreciation. That's not a problem, isn't it? So can you do that? We already have a cost, 50,000. So the cost is 50,000. And to calculate under the diminishing value, we have to minus the accumulated depreciation because we need to follow the carrying value, isn't it? So minus 32,850. That's depreciation is already done in 2008. And that will give us the carrying value, isn't it? So how much is the carrying value? I don't know, 50,000 minus 32,850. So uh, uh, if anyone can give me the figure, 50,000 minus the depreciation, we already calculated 17,100. Thank you, Esther. So 17,100. And here, all you need to do, you need to calculate the 30%, isn't it? Is it 150? No problem. So we calculated 30% on that. And that will give us the depreciation for the 2009. So that should be how much? 5154? 5145. All right, so that's the depreciation. 5145. And the next question is how much will be the total accumulated depreciation? And we already know that that's the total. So you already have 32,850 plus this one, isn't it? So we said this is for 2009. And for 2008, we have some depreciation already. That is 32,850. So let's say added this to. So that's fine. If you added this to how much it is? 37,995. Very well done. Very well done, Joe. It's all right. So we can do that. 37,995. So all you need to remember, if the question said under the diminishing balance, we have to minus any depreciation you already have. And we calculate the depreciation on the carrying value. All right, so any question from here, activity four. As I said, it's not very difficult, but all you need little bit practice, that's it. If you do practice, that will be absolutely fine. All right, very well done. Let's move on. The next one we have the unit produce method. As I said, this is not kind of a very uh, usable uh, depreciation method, only if you are on the manufacturing industry, maybe that time it could be suitable for you, otherwise not. So the formula here you have to remember, number of unit produced, so life in number of unit, cost residual value. So. Let's try that. So it's not a very difficult thing anyway. I have a question from Flora. Which of the depreciation method is more beneficial? Well, um, as I said, like it's the company choice. You can choose the straight line. You can choose the diminishing. It depends on your asset. For example, uh, let's say uh, you have an asset and the asset values fluctuate very much. For example, 
uh, let's say um, some asset, the value remain fixed, it doesn't change so much. For example, you have iPhone. Uh, you know the value of the iPhone is doesn't change too much. So let's say if it is 1000 next year, it will be like 1100. So it doesn't like uh, fell down like 500 to 1000, no. So if it is if it is a remain uh, fixed, then you might think, okay, my asset value remain fixed. I will go for the straight line method. And any method you followed, uh, there should be consistency. For example, if you tell HMRC, I'm following the straight line for 2020, and uh, 2021, you cannot just jump to diminishing. If you want to move to another representation method, uh, you can at the first time. But uh, let's say in 2020, you have a straight line. 20, 2021, you move to a diminishing uh, value. And 2023, you come back again to a straight line. Again, uh, diminishing, you cannot do it. So you have to follow the consistency. So if you follow is any depreciation method, you have to follow that. And even the percentage, you can decide. For example, if the company is a really uh, wealthy company, it's a kind of a rich company, uh, they might think like, I'm not going to use the asset uh, for long. So let's say think about Google or think about NASA. They change the computer every year. So for them, the useful life is only one year. But so for some company, like they use the computer for 5, 10, 15 years. So for them, the useful life is long. So it entirely depends on the organization. There is no hard and soul rules for that. It depends on company how they could get benefited. But they have to follow the consistency. They just cannot jump here and there. All right. So... No, you can choose any of the any of the depreciation method for different asset, Joe. For example, you said for the furniture, fixture and fittings, you said I'm going to use the diminishing. And for the uh, computer, I'm going to use a uh, straight line. So it's all up to you. But it has to be the same class of asset. You cannot say like one computer is a straight line, another computer is diminishing. It's not going to work. So you need to say all this computer we have, we follow the straight line. All right, so let's have a look at activity five. On activity five, we have unit of production depreciation. So let's read this question, machine. A business, a business acquired a machine costing 40,000. So this is the cost of the machine, 40,000. The machine is expected to produce 100,000 units over the useful life. So all over the life, how long the machine will be used for, they can produce 100,000 units. But we need to see how many units we produce on uh, every year. So, but this is the maximum the machine can make, 100,000 units. Over the last three years, it has produced the number of units shown below, okay? So we have year one, year two, and year three. Now, this is basically, if you added um, uh, this three, this is the total unit they make so far. So all of this 40,000 cost, I have to spread in year one, year two, and year three, based on the number of unit we produce. So in year one, we have produced 10,000 units. So how much depreciation we're going to take from 40 and include on year one? This is the question basically, because this 40,000 will be all of his useful life or the 100,000 unit. So if we just uh, find it out, how much is the uh, depreciation per unit? So let's say, the total cost is 40,000 and the total unit is 100,000 unit, isn't it? So if I divide with that, 40,000 divide 100,000, that will give me, that will give me uh, the cost per unit, isn't it? So that will be very helpful for me to identify how much the cost per unit. So 40,000, over 100,000, so I think it's 40 pence. So 40 pence per unit, isn't it? Or you can say 0 0.40, 40 pence per unit. Now for the year number one, for the year number one, we make 10,000 units. So we can say 10,000 times 0 0.40. In year number two, we made 24,000 unit. So you can say 24,000 times 0 0.40. Year number three, we make 30,000 unit. We can say 30,000 times 0 0.40. And that will give me like how much cost I should, I should split on which year, how sh I should allocate to which year. 
So, all right, so let's start with the first one. So activity uh, five, so you have 40,000 is the cost. So how much will be the depreciation for the first year? Can anyone tell me? 10,000 times 40p, so it should be 4,000. So the first year, it will be 4,000. So it's a depreciation charge, 4,000. And how much will be the accumulated depreciation? That's the first year, we don't have any depreciation before. So the accumulated depreciation will be still 4,000, isn't it? Accumulated depreciation means total depreciation from the very beginning till now. And how much will be the carrying value? 36,000. So 40,000 minus 4,000, that gives me 36,000, the carrying value. So the next year, we're gonna follow 36,000 is left. And how much will be the depreciation for the next year? 24,000 you need to have make. So 24,000 times 0 0.40. So how much will be the depreciation for year number two? So in year two, we made 24,000 unit. 9,600, all right. So 9,600 is the depreciation for that year. And how much will be the accumulated depreciation now? We have already 4,000 from the last year plus 9,600 for this year. So 9,600 plus 4,000, that will be my total depreciation till now. So that will be 13,600, very well done. 13,600. And how much will be my carrying value for after the year two? So we have a carrying value minus the depreciation. So that will give me my, uh, my carrying value for the year two. So how much it will be? So you have a 36,000 and we have a 9,000, 6,000 is the depreciation. So the remaining balance will be how much? 26,400, very well done. So 26,000, 26,400, very good. So you're gonna bring 26,400 here. And yeah, number three, the depreciation, 30,000 unit times 40 pence. How much is the depreciation here? So 30,000 times 40p, that will give me the depreciation for year number three. So it is 12,000, very well done. And how much will be the accumulated depreciation? 12,000 plus 13,600 we already have from the before. So 12,000 for this year and 13,600 from the last year. So 25,600, 25,600. And how much will be the carrying value? 26,400 minus 12,000, that is 14,400. All right, so that's it. That's it for uh, the unit produced. But as I said, it's a, it's, it's a very hardly tested in the exam as well. So you're not gonna see it in the exam very often and not even in the company you work. So if the company is based on like uh, the manufacturing industry, maybe they use it. Otherwise you're not gonna see it uh, uh, normally. All right, so any question from here, activity five, before we move to the next question. Any question from here? All right, so very good. So let's move on to the next one then. So the next question we have this one, they said asset accrued part way through the year. Now this is, uh, this is very important because it is possible uh, you buy the asset middle of the year. For example, it's not like always you're gonna buy the asset at January, every year January, and you calculate the depreciation for the full year. It's not gonna happen some, like always. So uh, maybe you buy asset in June, you buy asset in July, you need a computer in August, you need a computer in March. Uh, during the year, anytime you might need asset. So if this is the case, what will happen? So you need to calculate the depreciation based on the month, isn't it? For example, let's say uh, in 2020, I buy a computer on June. So I'm not gonna charge depreciation for the whole year because I never used this uh, computer for the whole year. I just purchased it in June. So from June to December, for example, my year is ending on December. 
So I'm going to use it only for six months for the 2020. So I'm going to charge depreciation only for six months, not for the whole year. So this is basically called when you buy the asset uh, like uh, partway through the year. Now, uh, it is also important to remember the quotient will tell you exactly what to do. So in the quotient, they will tell you uh, charge depreciation, uh, uh, charge depreciation uh, uh, the year of acquisition and do not charge any depreciation on the year of disposal. So this is very, very common. The caution will tell you like charge depreciation when you buy full year. For example, if the caution tell you charge depreciation full for the year of acquisition, doesn't matter which month you purchase, you have to charge full year depreciation. And the, if the caution said, do not charge any depreciation for the year of disposal, that means when you actually sold the asset and that time don't charge any depreciation, then don't do it. So you need to follow the caution strategy. All right, let's read this question first. Activity six is say business, a business has the following information relating to non-current asset. A piece of furniture described as uh, whatever is the name, uh, FUJ838 was accurate on 1st April, 2008. So I buy it 1st of April, 2008 for 8,000 pounds. Furniture is a depreciated 10% using the straight line method, okay? And the depreciation is uh, calculated. The depreciation is calculated on uh, an annual basis and charged in equal installment in full month and asset is on the year. Okay, so they said depreciation is calculated on an annual basis or so yearly basis and charged in equal in, uh, equal installments for each full month. So I have to follow the full month is very important. Yeah, it's 2018, okay. So uh, yeah, maybe 2018, yeah, X is uh, whatever it is. So anyway, so uh, let's follow that, uh, the each month. So we said like uh, each month you have to uh, charge the deposition. Now it's a very, very important, like you follow, um, you follow that. Uh, the question, what they give the direction. So if the question give you an instruction, like do the calculation for each month, you have to follow each month. If the question said, you don't have to just charge the deposition for the full year, you do that. So we follow in the company policy. A company have a different policy and we have to follow the policy based on the question or based on the requirement on the question. All right. So let's have a look. The first one. The first one is saying, uh, calculate accumulated depreciation and the carrying amount for the year ended 31st December 2008. So you can see we buy on April and our year is ending December. So from April, April 2018, okay, so 2018 to December 2018. How many months is here? Here is nine months. So we're not gonna charge the depreciation for the whole year. We're going to charge each full month. So I'm going to say the cost was 8,000 pound. So the cost was 8,000 pound. Cost was 8,000, isn't it? And the depreciation is how much? 10%. So I said 10% is the depreciation. So that is 800 for the whole year, for the 12 month, isn't it? So 800 for the 12 month. So if I want to take it for the nine month, what I do, I divide by 12 and times by nine. And that will give me four, the nine month. So it is 59994, you can say 600, isn't it? So make a round. 600, so 600 is the depreciation uh, for the nine month. So we say depreciation is 600. We don't have any previous depreciation. So that's the accumulated depreciation, 600. And how much is the carrying value? So 8,000, from 8,000, if I minus 600, that's my carrying value, isn't it? 7,400, 7,400. Very well done. 
So this is the representation we have and the covering value. Very well done. Very well done, Joe. Very well done, Sidra. So uh, this is the carrying value we have, and this is the depreciation. The next one they said, calculate the accumulated depreciation and the carrying value for the next year. So 31st December, 2019. So how much it will be? Next year, the depreciation will be full, isn't it? So you already have 600 from the last year. So 600 from 18 and on 19, I have another 800, isn't it? So the total accumulated depreciation for 2019, it will be how much? 1400, 1400. And how much will be the carrying value? So from 8,000, if I minus the 1400, how much will be left? 6,600, very well done. So this is my carrying value. So the first year we can see we calculate only for the nine month, that's why it's less 600. But for the next year we have, that is uh, our, that is our uh, uh, accumulated depreciation because 600 plus 800, that gives me 1400. Uh, isn't it on the car, carry for us 740, you mean, um, this one carrying value is 7,400, yes, it is, yeah. Okay, Samira, we can. So obviously how to get the carrying value. All right, so carrying value for which one? Is it for the 2018 or for the 19? So let's talk about both again. So let's say for the depreciation, um, so are we happy with the 600, the depreciation? So you have calculated nine month, April to December is nine month. And if I have to calculate the depreciation for the nine month, so obviously we can see 10% on 8,000, that is 800 for one year, isn't it? 800 for 12 month. So we want to calculate for the nine month. So it said 800 divide 12, uh, that will give me per month. And if we multiply by nine, that gives me for the first 600. So for the nine month depreciation. And the question said, how much is the carrying value? So carrying value is the cost minus the depreciation. So the cost is 8,000 minus depreciation 600. So that gives me 7,400, isn't it? This is the carrying value for 2018. The next one for the 2019, this accumulated depreciation. Now the accumulated depreciation means the total depreciation till now. So you already have some depreciation from the last year. So last year we have calculated for nine months, 600. But this year we're going to calculate 10% straight away, isn't it? So we said 8,000 times 10% and that give me 800 because this year I'm gonna use it for full year. Last year, the reason I have calculated for nine months because I use it for nine months, I buy it on April. So I cannot charge for the whole year. So 800 for this year, 2019, and from the last year, we have 600. So 800 plus 600, that's 1400 accumulated. Accumulated means up to now, isn't it? It's a straight line. Yes, it is a straight line. So accumulated means up to now, till today, how much is the reposition? So if my total depreciation 1400 till now, so 8,000 was the cost. So 8,000 minus 1400, that gives me the carrying value 6,600. That's it. Any question from here? Anyone is still confused for that? Any area? Samia, did you understand it? All right, so very good. So let's move on to the next question then. Now we have the accounting for the depreciation. So we already discussed that, this one. So the depreciation will go to the profit and loss account. So the depreciation charge will go to the profit and loss account. And the non current asset accumulated depreciation will go to the balance sheet. So remember that. So depreciation is a debit, accumulated depreciation is a credit. So depreciation is a debit, accumulated depreciation is a credit. So you have to remember the journal. Journal is very important. In the exam, there will be definitely journal question. So you have to make sure how to do it. 
All right, so let's move on to our uh, activity seven. So depreciation in the financial statement using the information in activity one. In activity one, if you remember, our depreciation was 750. Activity one, the one we have done. So activity one, the depreciation was 750. I'm just writing it down so that we can remember that. Straight line depreciation machine, assuming the machine was a cash purchase, whatever it is. So if the cash purchase money will go from the bank, show the journal entry to record depreciation at the first year. So what will be the journal recording the depreciation at the first year? Remember the journal is fixed. Depreciation is debit. Depreciation is a debit, 750. And accumulated depreciation is a credit. 750. The journal has to be on your head, remember that. So if you remember, they'll give you the journal, depreciation, debit, accumulated depreciation, credit. All right, so we can do that. We can say very easily this one, depreciation, depreciation charge, debit, 750, and machine. It was for the machine, so we'll say the machine machine accumulated depreciation credit 750 so you have to remember that before the accumulated depreciation you have to use the non-current asset name because you might have more than one non-current asset you might have a computer you might have a machine you might have a furniture so you have to remember that like if you don't mention for which accumulated depreciation so you'll be very confused after so that's why it is important like you use what type of asset it was if it was a machine it is a furniture so you have to add before the accumulated depreciation so you need to say furniture accumulated depreciation you have to say machine accumulated depreciation all right so let's move on this is just a journal nothing to understand from here so let's have a look this one, how to record that. It's very, very important. I think uh, we need to understand that. So let's talk about a little bit uh, first about the machine at cost. Let's try to remember if we remember our journal. Uh, everyone try together because it's important to remember the journals. Let's say uh, when you buy a machine, when you buy a machine, what is the journal? Let's say buy a machine, so purchase machine. Purchase a machine, 2,500 by bank. So what will be the journal for that? So machine, debit, bank credit, isn't it? So we said machine, machine at cost, debit, 2,500 and bank, Credit 2500. 2500. So, number one is done. Very good. So, we understand this one. Now, the next one we have here depreciation because we have depreciation as well. So, we have a machine, we have a bank, and we have a depreciation ledger account. So, the depreciation is debit. You already know that. So, depreciation is a debit, deposition charge, 750, and machine accumulated deposition credit, 750. So machine accumulated deposition credit, 750. This number two, because they have a deposition, accumulated deposition, both. So, and we also know, we also know that uh, the deposition goes to profit and loss account, p &L and the accumulated deposition goes to balance sheet. Okay, now we have to put in this on the ledger account. We already know this thing, but still we need to know uh, like how we include this thing on the ledger account. Remember one thing, when we record something on the profit and loss account, so we said profit and loss account, but when something recorded for the balance sheet, we said balance CD and BD. So if you need to transfer something to the profit and loss account, you don't have to calculate the balance CD or BD. For example, let's start with the machine at cost. Now machine at cost belongs to SOFP. That means this item belongs to balance sheet or a statement of financial position. So I'm not gonna say profit and loss because this item belongs to a statement of financial position and anything belongs to statement of financial position, we have to calculate balance CD and BD. 
So let's have a look. So first thing we said, so machine is a debit and bank is credit. So machine is a debit. So you are doing the machine account. So on the debit side, I'm going to write bank. So the first one, machine is debit. So on the debit side, I'm going to write bank. That is 2,500. And that's the only machine we have. We have nothing. So this machine will be added on our financial statement on the balance sheet. So I'm going to say total, it is whatever, 2,500. 2,500, that's the total. And the balance CD is 2,500. And this balance CD will come as a balance BD, 2,500. So what do you understand from here? So right now on my statement of financial position or on the balance sheet, I have an asset. The cost is 2,500 and I paid it from the bank and still I have this asset. That's the thing. On the bank, what will happen to the bank? So bank is a credit. So on the credit side, I'm going to write machine at cost, isn't it? Machine at cost, the opposite. We know already how to uh, how to record in the ledger account. So machine at cost, 2,500. So bank is done, machine is done. Now the next thing we have a depreciation. If you remember, we have a depreciation for three years, year one, year two, year three. And every year we have the same uh, depreciation, 750 each year is a straight line. So 750 each year. So we have a depreciation debit, accumulated depreciation credit. So depreciation is a debit. So we are doing the depreciation account. So debit side, I'm going to write accumulated depreciation because we write opposite machine accumulated depreciation and that is 750 and this time i'm not going to write balance cd remember that because this items belongs to spl account very very careful this item belongs to spl account that is statement of profit and loss account so i'm not going to write any balance cd bd i'm going to write it straight away profit and loss account so i'm going to say profit and loss account pnl account year one so in year one, I'm going to charge 750 on the profit and loss account. Then you're gonna do the same thing for year two. Machine, STC depreciation, 750. I'm gonna write the same thing, profit and loss account, but this time year two, 750. And I'm gonna write the same thing again here, machine, STC depreciation, 750 and I'm going to charge on the PNL account but year three. So from the depreciation account we will understand how much depreciation is charging every year. So year one, year two and year three. Same amount because it's a straight line and this amount goes to profit and loss account. We do not write the balance CD and BD for that. And the final one we have, that is for the accumulated depreciation. So let's do that. On the accumulated depreciation, all you need to do, we need to do the opposite of the depreciation, the way I did for that. So let's try that. So accumulated depreciation is all about how much is the total depreciation. Accumulated means the total till now. So start from the first year. So for the first year, we can see, so accumulated depreciation is a credit. So on the credit side, I'm going to write the opposite, depreciation charge. So depreciation charge, that's for year one, 750. And this time I'm going to write balance CD because this item belongs to SOFP. If any item belongs to SOFP statement of financial position, we have to calculate the balance CD. So I said balance CD. Balance CD 750. And this balance CD will come opposite side as the balance BD, isn't it? Balance BD 750. And we'll do the same thing for year two. So depreciation for year two 750. So now 750 plus 750 after the year number two, the total depreciation become 1500, isn't it? 1500. And this 1500 become the balance CD now. 
that's the total. So that's 1500 become the closing balance for that. So we said balance CD. So that's for the total. So after year number two, end of year two, end of year two, my depreciation total is 1500. Now we can add the depreciation for year, uh, this is my balance CD, and this will come as a balance BD. So balance BD is 1500. That's my balance CD. And for year number three, depreciation, year three, that will be 750 again. So 750 plus 1500, uh, that will give me 2220. That's my total after year three. So end of year three. And that's my balance CD here, 2250. And that will be the balance BD later on. So what do you understand? Every year the depreciation will be added. We already know this thing, but we know how to record on the ledger account. So this type of ledger account normally will be in the exam. So you need to make sure you practice well and uh, more you practice will be more clear. It is not difficult, but as I said, we need a little bit of practice for that. If you do some practice, if you do some exercise, you'll be absolutely fine. But you need to make sure you, you do it very good because uh, 15 to 20 marks question will be come from the non current asset. So it's very important you, you can answer this question like without any mistake. All right, so any question from here, from the ledger account? All right, so let's move on. Oh, still it is not done yet. So still you have a little bit uh, left here. So uh, let's have a look, that one. So it says, what will be the statement of financial position? Now uh, on the profit and loss account, and we have a statement of financial position. So we already explained that on the profit and loss account, we only have the depreciation charge, depreciation charge. And that is 750 per year, isn't it? 750 per year. So depreciation charge, 750 per year. So we said year one, it is 750 depreciation charge. Year two, it is 750. And year three is 750. And on the other hand, on the other hand, we have a accumulated depreciation, accumulated depreciation and the carrying value. So we have a cost accumulated depreciation and the carrying value for the financial statement. So we can say at the beginning on year number one, the cost was 2,500 and the depreciation was 750. So if you minus that, that will give us the carrying value 750, uh, 1750 and year number two, Again, 2,500 is a straight line. So we're following that. Then we have a 1,500, the depreciation and the remaining value 1,000. We already done this one before, just to complete, because this time it is for the statement of financial position or balance sheet, 2,250 and the carrying value is 250. That was the residual value if you remember that. So all you need to remember, the cost minus accumulated depreciation will be the carrying value. And the dep depreciation is same every year, year one, year two, year three. Um, obviously, uh, yes, accumulated depreciation is basically the total depreciation. So if you record the depreciation on the, on the ledger account, you do opposite, you already know that. So if we prepare the ledger account for the accumulated depreciation, we write the depreciation charge. And if you do balance CDBD, that means like every year the depreciation, depreciation will be added. So last year plus this year, then this year plus next year, it will be added and it will be increasing. All right, so uh, if there is issue with order the book from BPP, uh, you can do one thing, you can check on the Amazon as well. So sometimes uh, you can see the book on the Amazon and um, um, obviously like even if you buy book from the last year or a little bit old, it will be fine. So this advanced bookkeeping paper doesn't change much or anything. If you buy a little bit old book, it will be still fine. All right, so move to the next one then. The next one we have activity eight. Let's try that. 
So on activity eight, we have, let's read this question. It's a ledger account, accounting for non-current asset. This task is about ledger accounting for the non-current asset. You are working on accounting for a business that is registered for the VAT, okay? <clears throat> then it says the financial year end 31st of August. So the year is ending. It's very, very important. When you do this type of question, you have to remember the year ending. So when the year is end, because the depreciation will be calculated based on the year. So financial year is ended 31st of August, 2009. A new vehicle has been accrued. So VAT can be reclaimed, all right? Uh, maybe this type of information is not very, very important for you. When you calculate the depreciation, uh, you can claim the VAT or not, it's not very important for you. The cost excluding VAT, 28,000, so that's the cost. So the main point here is like, uh, we need to identify the cost, isn't it? Now they said the VAT excluding cost, and we know the business is VAT registered and we can claim back the VAT. Now, if we can claim back the VAT, so the VAT is not a cost for me, isn't it? If we can claim back the VAT, VAT is not a cost for me. And that's the reason. If the question give you VAT including amount, remember you have to take it out because VAT is not the cost for you. You can claim back the VAT. So if the business is not VAT registered, then VAT is also part of the cost. But if the business is VAT registered, VAT is not your cost. This was paid from the bank. So 28,000 pound paid from the bank. The residual value expected to 4,000 is estimated useful life four years. The vehicle are depreciated on a state line basis. A full year depreciation is applied in the year of acquisition. Remember this line is very important. A full year depreciation is applied in the year of acquisition. So it doesn't matter when you buy doesn't matter when you buy, even if you buy uh, before the two month of the year end, it's still you're going to charge the full year depreciation because the question said the company have a policy to charge the depreciation uh, for the full year of acquisition. Depreciation has already been entered in the accounting for the existing vehicles. That means we have some more <clears throat> vehicle, we have some more asset and some depreciation is already included there. Calculate the depreciation charge for the year uh, for the year on new vehicle. Can we calculate that? How much is the depreciation for the new vehicle? So we have the cost. So cost is 28,000. And the residual value is 4,000. And the useful life is four years. So how much is the depreciation per year? 6,000, very well done. So let's move on. Let's have a look what else you have in this question. So the next one we have recording on the journals. So on the ledger account. So let's do that. The first one is vehicle at cost. We know it if you buy a new vehicle. So the new vehicle will buy 28,000. So vehicle at cost debit, bank is credit, isn't it? So we are doing the vehicle at cost, that's a debit. On the debit side, I'm going to write bank. That is 28,000. And that gives me my new asset. Now my total non-current asset or the vehicle will be how much? 36 plus 28. So that will give me 64. 64,000 and 64,000. Remember, I'm not gonna write profit and loss because vehicles belong to SOFP and anything belongs to SOFP, there will be balance CD and BD for that. So I'm going to write balance CD, 64,000. All right, the next one we have a depreciation. We already have some depreciation uh, from the previous uh, vehicle or something, whatever it is. Now we need to see the new uh, vehicle. So for the new vehicle, the depreciation we have calculated 6,000. So depreciation charge. So depreciation charge is a debit. So on the debit side, I'm going to write accumulated depreciation for the vehicle. So vehicle ACC depreciation, 6,000. So nine and six is 15. So nine and six is 15,000. And the 15,000 here. And this time, Depreciation, depreciation charge belong to SPL, statement of profit and loss account. This time I'm not gonna write the balance CDBD. I'm going to write PNL account. 
So I'm going to charge 15,000 to the PNL account. All right, the next one we have the accumulated depreciation. We already have some. So accumulated depreciation is a credit. So on the credit side, I'm going to write the depreciation charge. That we have calculated 6,000. And this item belongs to SOFP. And as soon as we see SOFP, remember, we need to calculate the balance CD and BD. So I say 24,000 is the total. 24,000 is the total. And the balance CD, 24,000. That's perfect. All right, so any question from here? You have to be like, do a lot of practice to, uh, especially, on the ledger account because this ledger account will be definitely in the exam so you need to make sure you know how to do it all good so that's perfect so what we'll do uh, i think this is the understanding we have for the deposition hopefully if we remember that will be fine for that this is the end of the chapter number four so 